This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Growing up as kids, many current NBA players recall the days of their youth where they visualized themselves getting drafted to the NBA. For some, it was a dream come true, and for others, it was a lost fantasy that vanished never to return. But in both of these instances, there was a common goal. The objective within everyone's eyes was to be the one to finally make it. NBA superstar Russell Westbrook is the one who made it. Although he is a young, athletic, and explosive guard in the NBA today, his success did not come so easy. Before Russell Westbrook was a six-time NBA All-Star, before he became an outstanding fashion icon, and before he became associated with NBA legend Oscar Robertson as the only other player in NBA history to average a triple-double in a single season, Russell Westbrook was just, well nothing. To further understand how he got to where he is today, we must take a trip to the past. In today's video, we take a look at the shocking true story behind Russell Westbrook's NBA career. Also, I wanted to apologize to you guys for not uploading as much as before. As of recently, I've been trying to focus more on quality over quantity. But then again, your opinions matter to me as well. What do you guys prefer? Each week, should I upload one long video with quality editing and detail, or two short videos with decent quality and editing? Please let me know in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Your support means a lot to me and motivates me to grind even more. Now with all that being said, let's begin. Welcome to NBA Insider. Westbrook shows from the basketball. Goes to the rim! Russell Westbrook Jr. was born on November 12, 1988 in Long Beach, California to parents Russell Westbrook Sr. and Shannon Horton. As a kid, Westbrook was always known to be smaller and skinnier than everyone else. In other words, nothing came easy for him and he overworked in everything he did. He was very competitive from a young age and also hated losing. Russell himself would say, I've always had to prove myself to people growing up. I had to show them that I could do this and I could do that and paying no mind to what critics said. Raised in South Central Los Angeles as a Christian child, Russell Westbrook played a lot of sports including tennis, baseball, and he even played as a quarterback and running back for his local football team. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for a late growth spurt that he received during his years in high school, he may have stuck with football in college. Luckily, that wasn't the case. Despite his love for football and other sports, his favorite sport as a kid was none other than basketball. His father, Russell Westbrook Sr., also had a passion for basketball, so much so that he was determined to teach his son the right way to play the game. As a dedicated pickup basketball player from Compton, his father used to take him around town to find pickup games. He put his son through various basketball and military drills when he was young to help develop his game. Russell would also perform multiple reps of push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, dips, endless sprints, and agility drills. Following this, the two would spend hours in the gym where his father would make him shoot a minimum of 500 shots a day. Every single day, he would spend his time with his son working on his shooting form. This shooting would continue until his arms hurt and legs gave out or until the sun set. The workouts would only get more intense when Westbrook's family would move from Los Angeles to a nearby city called Hawthorne when Westbrook was 12 years old. Off the court, Russell Westbrook's father also took mental notes while watching the LA Lakers games during the Michael Jordan era. Those notes got passed down to his son and would eventually lead to Magic Johnson quickly becoming Russell Westbrook's favorite player. His mother, Shannon Horton, also made sure Russell stayed away from the streets while helping him focus on his academics. It was thanks to her that he would eventually become an honor student with a 4.0 GPA. In fact, it was his outstanding grades in school that would later on lead to him being accepted and receiving an academic scholarship to Stanford University. However, at the time, he did not end up going because the tuition was still too expensive for his parents. Anyhow, despite the fact that it was his dad that taught him everything about the sport of basketball, it was actually his childhood best friend that helped push Russell Westbrook to get to where he is today. Growing up, Russell Westbrook's best friend was Kelsey. Bars. The two lived relatively close to one another as Kelsey's house was just right across the street from Russell, literally a 30 second walk away. However, they never quite became good friends just yet. It wasn't until they started playing basketball together that they really began to bond. After they had become best friends, the two did everything with each other. As a matter of fact, they both attended Lozenger High School in Lawndale, California where they would play for the school's basketball team. Back in 2002, both Russell and Kelsey made the school's varsity team as 9th grade freshmen. 
Simmons. Entering high school, Russell Westbrook was a skinny 5'8", 140-pound point guard who, strangely enough, wore size 14 shoes. This made him the shortest player on the team. He did not start on his school's varsity team until his junior year and couldn't even touch the rim, let alone dunk, until he was a 17-year-old high school senior. He wasn't the best player at his school and he wasn't even the top player for his position. In his junior year, he posted averages of 12 points, 4.7 rebounds, 2 assists, 2.8 steals, and 0.4 blocks. Despite this, due to his lack of size and skill in comparison to the rest of his teammates, he never really grabbed the attention of many coaches and scouts. Kelsey Bars, on the other hand, was something else. As a 6'6", 200-pound small forward, he had exploded up on the radars of college coaches around the country after he had led the Lozenger Olympians to the quarterfinals back in 2003. In his sophomore season, he was posting averages of 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game. At just 16 years old, these outstanding performances by Bars led to him becoming a national top 40 recruit as well as being labeled as the best high school player in the nation. Russell Westbrook would say, At the time, he was probably the best basketball player I'd ever seen. Despite this difference in height, weight, and skill, both Westbrook and Bars were inseparable. They had always been teammates, but more importantly, best friends. Whether it was on the playground or at school, the two could always be seen spending time with one another. In fact, the goal was for the two of them to continue being teammates in college where they planned to play for the UCLA Bruins. From there, both players planned to make it to the NBA where they would have encouraged each other both on and off the court. However, the chances of that happening began to grow slim considering the fact that Bars was getting scholarship offers and calls from all around the country while Westbrook had only gained attention from a few small schools. So when Ben Howland, the former coach of the UCLA Bruins at the time called Lozenger High School head coach Reggie Morris, he didn't even bother mentioning Russell Westbrook. Instead, Howland had his eyes focused on the strongest kid on the team who wore number 3, which was of course none other than Kelsey Bars. This didn't come as a surprise considering the fact that Westbrook was still a scrawny player who had a lot to improve on, but at the same time, the two friends were not expecting things to happen so soon. They had figured things would eventually work themselves out and decided not to worry about college for another year. However, despite UCLA's interest in Kelsey Bars and Russell Westbrook's determination to join his friend on the same team, the dreams of that ever happening came to a tragic end. On Tuesday, May 11, 2004, during his sophomore year, Kelsey Bars, along with some of his teammates and friends, went to LA Southwest College to play pickup basketball games. Bars would go to this gym every Tuesday to scrimmage against older, talented players. However, on this specific days, things took a turn for the worse. After playing his fourth game, Bars suddenly collapsed onto the feet of one of his teammates. At first, his friends thought he was joking. He had that type of personality. But then, he didn't get up. Instead, he began gasping for air. At this point, his friends started yelling at him saying, Kelsey, this isn't funny. Kelsey, stop playing. Still, no response. Southwest head coach rushed to the scene to perform CPR. At some point between a nurse rushing down and the ambulance arriving, Kelsey Bars woke up. His eyes opened wide as he looked around the room. He sat up, shrugged his shoulders, and then a second or two later, he fell back once more with his eyes rolling back into his head. His breathing had stopped momentarily before he was revived and brought to the emergency room of a medical hospital in Inglewood. However, it was too late. This time, he was gone for good. We went to go sit down over on the side and he was laughing and joking with a couple of the young guys and then he, he kind of collapsed and then took one big gasp of air and then he just fell back. When I got to the hospital, that's when his dad told me, pulled me to the side and told me that he had passed. Kelsey was pronounced dead by the time he reached the hospital. He had died from an enlarged heart. He was just 16 years old. Upon receiving news of his death, Reggie Morris, Lozenger's head coach, left the hospital to go tell Russell Westbrook the shocking news. Westbrook had already heard the news by the time he had arrived. He had been playing on the third court in the gym the day it happened, but he left before the incident took place. Just four days later, Bars' funeral took place. His death had shaken Russell Westbrook. None of this was supposed to happen. Russell Westbrook was supposed to be playing basketball with Bars that Saturday afternoon not attending his funeral. Regardless of this, Kelsey Bars was more than just a friend to Russ. He was like a brother. Russell himself spoke on his death saying, he was my best friend. He lived across the street from me and we were together all the time. When he passed, it just made me think about life and how every time I step on the floor, I have to give it my all because every time he played, he gave 100%. You can't take life for granted. Every day when I get on the floor, I give it my all and play because you never know what tomorrow holds. Instead of simply mourning Kelsey's death and moving on, Westbrook decided that he would never let Kelsey's memory fade.
aid. So following his death, he began taking steps towards the goal that him and his best friend once set for themselves, to play for the UCLA Bruins and to make it to the NBA. Although he had always been a hard worker, it was actually Barz's death that triggered a fire inside of Westbrook that continues to burn to this day. When we look at Russell Westbrook today, it always seems like he plays with so much anger and hate. But this wasn't always the case. You see, when Kelsey Bars and Russell Westbrook were both still in high school, they both had exciting characters. However, as shocking as it may seem, Russell was actually much calmer than most of his peers. As a matter of fact, Russ was a discreet kid who let his game do most of the talking. Kelsey, on the other hand, was outgoing and possessed an outward confidence. The reason Russell Westbrook plays with so much heart and determination in today's NBA is because he is doing it as a way of honoring his best friend. Anyhow, Russell took Kelsey's death as an opportunity to carry on his legacy. He decided to dedicate his entire work ethic to Kelsey Bars. From the moment he passed away, Russell Westbrook was carrying on for two. Following his death, out of respect for his friend, he began helping Bars' family by doing the chores Kelsey normally did, every single morning before going to school. On the court, Russell Westbrook doubled his efforts. First, he grinded his way into the starting lineup as a junior. Then, the summer before his senior year, he underwent a growth spurt that suddenly transformed him. The undersized junior had grown from a scrawny 5'8", 140 pound nobody into a talented 6'3", 180 pound star guard. He returned his senior year to Lozenger High and went from being a regular backup point guard that everyone once knew to a dominant high school player. As a senior, Westbrook averaged 25.1 points, 8.7 rebounds, 3.1 steals, and 2.3 assists while helping lead his team to a 25-4 record. That same season, he recorded 14 double-doubles, scored 30 or more points on 8 separate occasions, and registered a career-high 51 points in a January 6, 2006 game. This was also around the time that he finally dunked a basketball for the first time. Despite all of his outstanding performances, Westbrook still did not attract much attention from top college basketball programs. Honestly, I never thought I had a chance of playing in college, Russell himself would say. Luckily for us, he was given that chance. Just before his high school graduation, scholarship offers were coming in from nearly every major college across the country. And despite the fact that he received offers from other schools such as Creighton and San Diego State, he ended up choosing UCLA after Jordan Farmar, the team's main point guard, departed for the NBA, leaving the team in need of a new guard. This was the perfect opportunity for Russell to build a name for himself on a well-known team. Not only that, but this was the school that Kelsey Bars had originally wanted to attend to before his death. So after receiving the last available scholarship from UCLA, Russell Westbrook accomplished a goal not only for himself, but also for his best friend. But the hustle wouldn't stop there. Before heading off to UCLA, Westbrook decided to switch his number 4 jersey that he wore in high school to symbolize the 4 people in his family to the number 0. When asked why he did this, he said, You go with 0 when you've been through something and you are looking to get a new beginning. It helps you get going again. It helps you get the swag back. In 2006, when he first arrived at UCLA as a college freshman, Russell Westbrook mostly rode on the bench. As a matter of fact, as crazy as this may sound, he only played the role of a backup point guard for now NBA player Darren Collison. He was primarily used as a defender and energy player off the bench. That's pretty hard to imagine considering the way things are now with Westbrook being a superstar and Darren Collison not so much. For that entire season, Russell Westbrook only averaged 9 minutes per game. In these games, his total averages were only 3.4 points, 0.4 steals, 0.7 assists, 0.8 rebounds, and 0 blocks. The summer after that season, Westbrook would once again spend most of his days in the gym as he pushed himself to improve his skills. He dedicated himself to developing his game. He worked out twice a day until the season started, lifting weights and running with no breaks in between. He would also play pickup games with NBA superstars Kobe Bryant and Kevin Garnett during their summer workouts at UCLA. With all of this training and dedication, Russell Westbrook would add an additional 10 pounds of muscle and several more inches to his vertical. The following season, he was ready to prove his ability on the court. It wasn't until his sophomore season when Darren Collison received an injury that Westbrook was thrusted into the starting lineup where he would seize the opportunity he had been preparing for all summer. He upped his game tremendously as a sophomore, averaging 12.7 points, 3.9 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 1.6 steals, and 0.2 blocks. As a now athletic and explosive guard, Russell Westbrook helped the UCLA Bruins reach the Final Four in both of his seasons. He was also named to the All Pac 10 third team and also won the Pac 10 Defensive Player of the Year award. Following a successful career with the UCLA Bruins, Russell Westbrook entered his name in the 2008 NBA draft. He was selected in the first round as the fourth overall pick by the Seattle Supersonics, one spot ahead of his other UCLA teammate Kevin Love. This made
made him the last ever lottery pick for the team. He never even played a single game in a Sonics uniform because the team moved to Oklahoma City only six days after he was drafted. Fast forward eight years into the future and Russell Westbrook is still dominating on the basketball court to this day. He is regarded by many to be one of the most athletic players in the NBA. He plays tirelessly with speed but especially with strength. As a matter of fact, he just completed the best season of his career posting averages of 31.6 points, 10.7 rebounds, 10.4 assists, 1.6 steals, and 0.4 blocks. These stats are pretty hard to comprehend especially when considering all of the struggles that Russell Westbrook has gone through to get to where he is today. To this day, his work ethic hasn't changed much. He's usually the first one to arrive at practice and the last one to leave because why not? Westbrook also keeps Kelsey's memory close as he can constantly be seen wearing Kelsey's initials and jersey number printed on a rubber bracelet that he wears on his shooting wrist. Several of his shoes also feature a small RIP printed on one and KB3 on the other. Kelsey Bars never got the chance to go to college, the NBA, and never even had the opportunity to finish high school. Despite the fact that he has already left the school, Russell Westbrook still carries the legacy of Kelsey on his back as he plays each and every night on the NBA's wooden floors. In many ways, he is living the life that Bars never got to experience. The game of basketball was deprived 13 years ago when Kelsey lost his life and the chance to carry on with his career. But for Russell Westbrook, his memory lives on as a constant symbol of hope. A new year, a new season, and now a new journey. But the legacy remains the same. Before the making of this video, I honestly never knew that Russell Westbrook had such an interesting history. My respect for him has gone through the roof. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. This just goes to show that no matter what situation you're put in, no matter what hardships you're going through, there will always be brighter days. From being a scrawny little kid who tragically lost his best friend, to an amazing athlete who is on his way to an MVP, Russell Westbrook is a perfect example of this. And although many people may consider him lucky, he still went through many hardships and struggles throughout his life. Regardless, it doesn't matter because now he does what he wants.